Okay, we're recording. Good evening, everybody. Welcome to the Studio City Neighborhood Council regularly scheduled board meeting for September 21st. I'm Scott Mandel. I'm calling the meeting to order at 7.04 p.m. Our secretary, uh, Abby, is not here tonight and our corresponding secretary, uh, Jeff, will be filling that role. So Jeff, please call the roll. Good evening, everyone. Uh, Brandon, you can step in any time you want. You were so good at the job uh, previously, so. Um, I already stepped in a couple of times already, so I thought I might alrighty. go the world and see how you do. All right, let's call the roll. Kim Clements. Here. Dean Cutler. Here. Randall Freed. I believe he's absent tonight. Ira Gold. Here. Jeff Hartwick here. Julie Houlihan. Here. Scott Mandel. Present. Chip Meehan. He's traveling. He's not here tonight. Brandon Marino. Here. Richard Niederberg. Here. Karen Saro. Absent. Adam Summer. I'm sorry, I'm here. Thank you. Thanks. Alexis Steinberg. It's 7.05 p.m. Hope you've enjoyed your Wednesday. <laughs> absent. Abigail Velasco. I understand she's absent. I'm taking her place tonight. So we have a quorum. Great. Thanks, Jeff. Moving along to item two, president's comments. I'm gonna read something that's not on the agenda for the board and for the public, and then we'll move to the items on the agenda. Since neighborhood councils hold their meetings in the communities they serve, they are an important avenue for public participation in the city of Los Angeles and give the members of a community the chance to have input on decisions that affect their quality of life and the services they receive from the city. With that in mind, with the exception of the financial items, I'm gonna open public comment to a minute and a half based on that statement, which is posted at the Empower LA website. So we'll see how that goes tonight. On to item 2A. The board is to vote on applicant Peter Cole to fill the board vacancy business representative seat defined by our bylaws as a business representative, a person who legally provides goods or services for compensation in Studio City and who maintains a valid City of Los Angeles tax registration certificate, otherwise known as the City of Los Angeles business license or owns business real property in Studio City. Stakeholders who are 18 years of age or older at the time of the filing for candidacy. So according to our operating procedures and uh, bylaws, Peter Cole uh, qualifications were verified by the secretary and I, and he is now nominated for the open board seat. So what we'll do is we'll give Peter a chance to make an opening statement. If you can do that in like five minutes or less, that would be great. After Peter finishes his statement, we will then go to public comment uh, on Peter's uh, candidacy. And then we'll go to the board for Q&A. So with that in mind, Peter, please unmute yourself. God, am I timing this or no? Uh, no, you don't need to time it. Uh, okay. We'll just let him make his statement. Thank you. Can you all hear me? We hear you. Yeah. Might, might you be able to go live, um, Peter? Live with what? Uh, like with video, not just... I, I don't video? have a camera on this computer. Oh, uh, okay. So I can send you a picture of what I look like later. Hang, hang on. So can you turn that down? Um, I made a little, some notes and I was calm. And then I, I tuned in a few minutes early and before the recording, I hear Richard Niederberg discussing, uh, myself and whether or not I want to, uh, if I join the board, then I can't participate in some of the other things that I'm participating in. And then, uh, Richard says, uh, 
I guess the way he phrased it that with uh, there was some mention of me hassling the SCNC with my PRAs. I didn't see you hassle them. Yes, she did. Hey, let's. And, this, uh, I, and now I'm going to point Richard. Now I'm going to point of order to you, Richard. Shush. Okay. This is why people don't come to these meetings. You, some of this, I had a whole other thing prepared, but I'm going off on a tangent. You guys got to, as somebody else said before, um, who holds a puppet, you got to check yourself before you wreck yourself. This has gotten so out of hand. So I'm going to attempt to read what I was going to read. So started off with something nice. Thank you for the opportunity for par public participation. I don't even want to participate after what I heard from you, Richard. So what gets the public to show up? What got me to show up was a NIMBY event. Okay, and I'm here, and NIMBYs always get a bad name, but I'm here 10 years later, and I've done a lot for this neighborhood council. When I got involved, there was so much insider baseball going on that I swore that I would do whatever I could to make sure the public knew what was going on. And I started a YouTube channel, as you all know, that has hundreds of videos on it, that I went out and videoed this neighborhood council and other meetings in the community so the public would know what was going on. With my own money, I went out and bought this stuff. Sometimes, you guys don't even know, I spent 40 hours some, we some weeks working on this stuff, okay? So if Richard, if you have to do a PRA for the two that I probably sent to the neighborhood council, poor Richard. So what gets people to show up? Weddington golf and tennis should. It's a land use issue that was, it wasn't even properly addressed by our land use committee. Another failure. Sportsman's Lodge. Oh, look, another land use issue that wasn't properly addressed by our land use committee. And I, so anyway, I serve on both those ad hoc committees and I spend a lot of time reading the thousands of pages of documents. How many of you on the board have actually sat down and read those, the, the, all this, the, this uh, information from the city? I, I'm questioning whether a lot of you have. And then um, homeless issues, that's another thing that gets people uh, to come. And uh, so what does generate public participation? Brandon, do you know, you should know, you're the outreach chair. Obviously it's not working. And then, and, and then the public, when they speak up against the land use chair, they were so outraged by the actions of this person. And then former President Randy decides it's good form to protect her. You got to ask why, what's going on here? This is not what the community wants. And then we all speak out and want her removed. And then, of all people, Brandon then decides it's good form to jump on the public. And then some of the board, when Randy was, anyway, Randy was going off on uh, another stakeholder last time, um, a well-known stakeholder with a very long history of public service. And anyone who actually knows what goes on in Studio City would know she's practically the Mother Teresa of public service around here. And then some of you guys all decided it was good form to, to, to jump on. And this took an hour of time, but you guys or some of you are so worried about a minute or two minutes of public participation from the, it's, it's just so whacked. Anyway, then none of you seem to have any idea how to do, uh, bring, the, bring the public in. And um, I am just so rattled by you, what you said, Richard. I am just flabbergasted, you know, and I'm going to put it out there. It's like the only reason that you're still here is because some of us in the community felt sorry for you and made sure that people voted for you. Okay, so I would sit back, stop chewing, be polite and listen. If you're going to chew in my face, shut your camera off. Anyway, I have more to, more to, to say, and I'm just so pissed, but this is pretty sad that I'm the only candidate for this seat. What kind of outreach? What have you guys done to, to this, this, this entity? 
nobody wants to participate. I've got an email list of over 100 people that I've communicated with, with uh, big things that have happened in the community. Nobody wants to go anymore. I can't get anybody to go. Each board has chewed away at public participation. Anyway, I'm not pissed at all you guys. Some of you guys are great. I think you know who you are. The dead weight should quit. Randy should quit for his comments that he said about Patty Kirby. And, and for the board members that, that jumped on that whole thing and didn't shut Randy down, or to this day, haven't asked Randy to resign, you really don't know what goes on in Studio City. And it's an insult to those of us who spend countless hours working in the community. So anyway, um, I have no interest in serving with this group. And maybe one day when there's actually some decent outreach and you guys figure out what the heck you're all here for, let me know and maybe I'll resubmit my application. Thank you. Okay. Okay. That being said. Point of information, Mr. President, is he still applying for this job or not? Not job. He's, we don't get. I don't want to serve with you, Brandon. I'm done. I'm. You, you owe asking, me an apology. I'm only oh, asking a question to Scott. Me point of order. Apology. I am asking. Point the of order. You're asked. You owe me an apology. He stated that he would resubmit his application at a later time. So I took that to mean that we are now on to item 2B. I do think we should open that comment. I think we should too. There's no comment. There's no There's no uh, candidate for the- But we already opened up the item and to stop discussion will require a two thirds vote. No, it's an Brandon, agenda on, item. Everybody, hold on, hold on a second. Just wait, we're not- this The is, item is on the floor right now. Hold on a second. The candidate, He's no longer a candidate, okay? He withdrew. He withdrew oh. after we opened discussion on item two, no, I, which I'm means it's still on the floor. Uh, Understand I'm, your Robert's rules of order. I'm, he can't, he can't, no, we can't. We're, item 2A is currently oh, on Brandon, the Brandon, what is it you wanna do? You wanna insult another stakeholder in public? Okay. That's hey, what I, you're great at. Knock Peter, it off. Peter is going to be moved up. from a panelist to an attendee, hang on everybody. Uh, change role to attendee. Okay. Pete, the questions from the public and the board would be regarding Peter and his candidacy. He is no longer a, can a candidate. It will serve no purpose to have public comment and board discussion on this. If you wanna save it for another time, that's fine. He's done. He's off. It is no longer up for discussion. Uh, if you want to continue to argue about that. No. Were you asking me? I'm asking if anyone wants to continue the, the point of orders about the person who is no longer a panelist you know, he comes on and he, he, he attacks us and then he disappears. And obviously we can't talk about it because he is no longer a candidate. But, you know, I think all of us wanted to talk about it. You know, I don't hate Peter Cole. He, I, every, a lot of what he said is true. He is, he has been a part of this neighborhood council for a very right, long time. I recommend stopping right where we are Brandon, right now. With this Brandon, get, get, please stop, Brandon. You, okay. You've actually had a very inappropriate display during the candidate's uh, uh, speech. And it was, I found it to be quite embarrassing. So let's just move on to the next agenda item, please. He's, he's not the candidate anymore. If he comes back, we, yeah. Brandon, please, you're being recorded. It's not, your, your behavior is quite inappropriate. Let's move on. Uh, item 2B. Land Use Committee vacancy. The position of Land Use Committee Chair is currently available. If you are interested in becoming the Land Use Committee Chair or serving on the committee, please email smandel at studiocitync.org with a statement of interest. And I'm advising everybody that at this point in time, I am acting chair 
of the land use committee until I can find a chair. Item 2C, board vacancy. Youth member seat defined by our bylaws as a stakeholder who is at least 14 years and no more than 17 years of age on the day of the appointment. Please aim, email smandel at studiocitync.org with a statement of interest. I'm happy to inform everybody that we do have one person who's interested and that person will be stopping by to say hello on Saturday at our Movies in the Park event which our vice president outreach chair will probably be addressing in a few moments. Item D, discussion and motion to appoint up to four board members to attend Civic U 1.0 presented by Department of Neighborhood Empowerment and the Office of Mayor Garcetti. Civic U 1.0 presented by Dr. Raphael J. Shonen Schein, PhD Executive Director, Pat Brown Institute for Public Affairs, California State University, Los Angeles, Dates are October 6th, October 13th, and October 27th. Appointed board members must attend all three sessions. Motion, Board of the Studio City Neighborhood Council approves the appointment of, and I will fill in the names of the people who have asked to be appointed so far. The first person who asked was Richard Niederberg, so I'm appointing him. The second person who asked was Randy Freed. He's not here tonight. Randy Freed is appointed. We can have two more people appointed. If anyone from the board would like to be appointed to attend this, speak now and I'll add your name. Okay, so there's two. I will add myself then. So I will be the third, Scott Mandel, to attend Civic U 1.0 presented by the Department of Neighborhood Empowerment in the office of the mayor of Mayor Garcetti. Brought by Scott Mandel, seconded by, do we have a second on this? I'll second it. Thank you, Brandon is second. We will now go to public comment. I just wanna also tell the board in public that motion was written by Department of Neighborhood Empowerment and it was sent to me and that's how it had to be put on the agenda and we can have only four people and only two applied. If two more wanted to attend this tonight, I would not appoint myself, but since nobody else wants to be on it, I will be the third. And we still have room for one more, but these applications are actually due, I think tonight or tomorrow morning. So we're just making it in time. Now, we'll go to public comment. Anyone from the public who has anything to say about the appointees to Civic U 1.0, please raise your hand. Caller ending in 018. Speak about what I just read, the appointment of the three board members to Civic U 1.0. Go ahead. Hi, it's Barry. Um, were there no hands raised for 2A, 2B, 2C, 2D, as well as 2E? Because I didn't hear you ask for public comments on any of them, yet you read all five. So if anyone was raising their hands, they should have been able to speak. And I also agree with Brandon, if there were board members who wanted to speak on 2A, they needed to be allowed also to speak because the item was read. Thank you. We're, we're on uh, item 2D at the moment. Those were just president's comments and announcements. Those were not... Uh, Thank you, Brandon. Uh, those were not and are traditionally not public comment items. This is what we're talking about now is a motion required by Dunn for appointment to Civic U. Did you have something to say on that? Adele Slaughter, go ahead about Civic U 1.0. So uh, I have a question. Uh, when is the uh, meeting? The Civic U thing? It doesn't say in the motion. Right. Or, well, or that's that. exact. I, the motion is exactly as written, but it's only open to board members. And oh, okay. Because I was going to, I was going to volunteer to be, uh, to do it. But if it's only bo board members, then I can't. Yeah, there was a, there was an internal email sent to the board to see who wanted to participate. And Richard and Randy were the only two that responded and I just want to say just a quick little thing um 
um, I met with Joanna Deutsch and we were talking about um, having, you know, engaging kids or youth in civic engagement. And um, I think it's really important that we engage civically, you know, with our community. So, I mean, if there's any room for someone who's not a board member to attend, I um, put up my hand. So thanks. Thank you, Richard. More to say about, uh, yeah, you know, rather than just vote on it, you want to speak on it? Go ahead. So, yes. Um, Raphael, who is the one who is leads, he's head of the Pat Brown Institute at Cal State LA. What happened is he was the one that actually wrote the text of the neighborhood council formation documents that he voted on. He's the one that worked out all the arguments along the way. To what was presented to the of the uh, to the voters was his authorship. Thank you, Richard. I think we can go to a vote now. Uh, if we're approving Richard Niederberg, uh, Rand Randy Freed, and Scott Mandel to the Civic U 1.1 presented by Dunn. All right, let's uh, do the vote then. Vote on, vote on 2D, Clem, Kim Clements. Yes. Dean Cutler. Yes. Randall Freed's absent. Ira Gold. Yes. Jeff Harwick, yes. Julie Houlihan. Yes. Scott Mandel. Yes. Chip Meehan is absent. Brandon Marino. Yes. Richard Niederberg. Yes. Karen Saro is absent. Adam Summer. Yes. Alexis Steinberg's absent. And Abigail Velasco is absent. Unanimous. The vote passes. Great. Thank you. And then the last uh, item of President's comments is just to remind the public if you want to subscribe to our agendas, you must go to the website listed on the agenda. It's, I can say it, but it's easier if you just read it from the agenda. It's lacity.gov slash government slash subscribe dash agendas slash neighborhood councils. If you sign up at the SCNC website, you will only get our email blasts. You will not get our agendas. We are correcting the website. It's been in error for quite some time. Uh, for people of the public who request our agendas at our website, you will not get our agendas. We apologize for that. That's been like that for quite some time and it will be remedied very soon. You have to go to the city's ENS system to subscribe to our agendas and there will be no public comment on that item. Item three, we're gonna have the secretary report and that will be from Jeff Hartwick and you can read the rest of it and you can see the link for the minutes and, and such. So go ahead, Jeff. Yes, um, like approval of the August 31st special board meeting minutes. Um, do I have a second? Second. Let's call the vote on that. Kim Clements. Yes. Dean Cutler. Yes. Randall Freed's absent. Ira Gold. Yes. Jeff Harwick. Yes. Julie Houlihan. Yes. Scott Mandel. Yes. Chip Meehan's absent. Brandon Marino. Yes. Richard Niederberg. Yes. Karen Saro's absent. Adam Summer. Yes. <clears throat> Alexis Steinberg's absent. Abigail Velasco is absent. The minutes are approved. As in terms of attendance and uh, training compliance, uh, training compliance, I don't have the up-to-date facts on that, so I will defer to our secretary for next meeting. Thank you. Thank you. Moving on to five, treasurer report. Kim, go ahead, please. Okay. Um, Jeff wasn't going to talk on the filings of the CIS and stuff. Oh. Just yeah, let me let me jump in real quick. Um, all the CISs and motions have been filed from last month, except for the one concerning the the trouble at the DWP. 
um, that should be sent out uh, in the near future. Thank you. Great, thanks. Um, so this will be short and sweet. Um, we are trying to, just a, a quick little report, we are trying to get a budget meeting together to discuss a few things. Uh, one of which is a, um, uh, a neighborhood council, a neighborhood beautification project, I should say, and the other will be um, revision of the budget. Um, we should be getting, and it still hasn't, I haven't seen an official uh, that we've got use of the rollover funds, but I've spoken with the funding office, we are assured and can go ahead with revising the, the budget to include the 10,000 rollover. So we will be addressing that and bring that forward to the board next month for a vote. Um, so I'll read the two motions. So 5A motion, the board of the Studio City and Neighborhood Council approves the monthly expenditure report for August 2022. And I need a second, please. Second. Thank you, Richard. Going to public comment on the monthly expenditure report that Kim just mentioned, we will have one minute for public comment on this particular item. If anyone from the public wants to speak on that, raise your hand. Not seeing any hands, public comment is closed on this. Back to the board. Any board comments? Not seeing any hands, we can go to a vote on 5A. Let's go ahead and vote. Kim Clements. Yes, sorry, yes. <laughs> Dean Cutler. Yes. Randall Freed is absent. Ira Gold. Yes. Jeff Harwick, yes. Julie Houlihan. Yes. Scott Mandel. Yes. Jim Hans absent. Brandon Marino. Yes. Richard Niederberg. Yes. Karen Serrell is absent. Adam Summer. Yes. Alexis Steinberg is absent. Abigail Velasco is absent. Motion passes. You're muted, Kim. You're muted. Thank you. Sorry, I didn't realize I did that. Um, 5B, motion the board of the Studio City Neighborhood Council approves reimbursement to board member Richard Niederberg in the amount of $301.05, the purchase of beverages and snacks for the September movie night event postponed. Purchase was made at Costco, which would not accept use of the Los Angeles City credit card. Um, and by the way, for those who were not aware, the that event is now on again uh, this Saturday night, starting at 5.30. Um, so it was rescheduled. Uh, I do need a second, please. Second. Who, who was that? Jeff, thank you. Okay. We'll go to public comment if anyone has anything to say about the reimbursement for Richard Niederberg for the beverages and snacks. Please raise your hand. You'll have one minute. Not seeing any hands. Not seeing any hands from the board. We can vote on this. We're voting I on. I think, I think Barry's hand is up. Oh. oh, Barry, you wanted to comment on that. Go ahead, Barry. I just wanted to say thank you to Richard for doing this. He has saved us money. We have bought things there that we couldn't buy anywhere else that are individually wrapped in the, and in larger quantities. And um, as he and I have discussed, I think government affairs is going to do a motion to the city clerk just asking her to find a way to either use Visa instead of MasterCard or do something different so neighborhood councils can shop at Costco or, or Sam's Club, but we happen to not have any near us. So Costco would really be helpful and just see what the clerk's office has to say because it would be really useful for us. Thank you. Thanks, Barry. Uh, anyone else? Anyone from the board who wants to come in on this before we vote? Let's vote. We're voting on motion 5B to reimburse Richard. Kim Clements. Yes. 
Dean Cutler. Yes. Randall Freed absent. Ira Gold. Yes. Jeff Harwick. Yes. Julie Houlihan. Yes. Scott Mandel. Yes. Chip Meehan is absent. Brandon Marino. Yes. Richard Niederberg. Yes. Karen Cerro is absent. Yes. Adam Summer. Yes. Alexis Steinberg is absent. Abby's absent. Motion passes. Thank you. Moving on now to item six, Vice President Report. Brendan, go ahead, please. Uh, first off, really quick for Jeff Hartwick, do you want me to send you the BACs so you can um, propagate them with the votes, board action certifications for um, 5A and by 5B? I'll send them to you tonight. That'd be great. Thanks. Okay, cool. Also, really quickly for everybody in attendance, please um, mute your um, Alexa device because we're going to say her name quite often. And if you haven't already done it, please do so. I had to do mine. So um, getting on to the vice president's report. Uh, as Kim mentioned, we do have a movie night this Saturday, September 24th at Beeman Park from 530, I believe, until 9. It was postponed due to rain, the possibility of rain on September 10th. Nithya Raman is scheduled to be there, speaking around 630. I believe a lot of her um, staff is going to be there. I'm not quite sure if CD2 is going to be there. They're co-sponsoring the event. Um, they're um, handling, so I believe, the AV equipment, if I'm not mistaken. So I'm not quite sure if representatives from CD2 will be there as well. I'm hoping they are. That'd be very nice. But there's going to be a taco stand there. Abigail Velasco, who's not here today, worked her tail off putting this together, and I commend her for this. She did a wonderful job pivoting from September 10th and working with um, George, who's here today, and other individuals to get this done. So um, hats off to her, and hopefully she'll be there on Saturday. She's traveling right now. Also, elections are coming up. Um, in the past, I believe we've had ad hoc election committees run by sta a stakeholder or several stakeholders. I'm still weighing the options as to whether or not it should be an outreach thing or we should um, continue doing an ad hoc election committee but that's coming up uh, once again like i mentioned before at a prior meeting our elections aren't until june 22nd um, region 4 is the last possible day the last day actually for the citywide elections for um, neighborhood councils so we're going to get on that very shortly and um, other than that there's really nothing else oh no i'll, I'll save that for a later time that's all thank you Thank you, Brandon. We will now move on to item seven, public comment on non-agenda items within the neighborhood council's jurisdiction. If you have a public comment, you will be allowed one minute, 30 seconds to speak. So raise your hand, Patrice, go ahead, please. So I don't know what to say other than Brandon, you are such an embarrassment to, there's so many respectable people that are working hard on this committee and you're, you are a clown. And to do that, that display to, to the public, to somebody that I just, I'm, I'm really shocked and I will be filing in a complaint with Dunn and I want the board to know it's got nothing to do with all of you. You're all extremely respectable. I was on the board for three years. I know how it all works. And I know you guys are putting the time and effort in. And it was disgusting, quite honestly. And that's not what the board is supposed to do. You're supposed to listen to the public and not, I, I'm disgusted. That's all I can say. Thank you. 018, Barry, go ahead. Can you hear me now? Yes, we do. Uh, I would just like to request that um, in future agendas, if there's any agenda items that are not, that public comment is not being taken on, that that item say public comment will not be taken on this item. Because with 2A through E, I mean, it's like a pick and choose. What's, what's public comment of A through E and what isn't? Um, if there's going to be some that aren't, it, I think it needs to say. 
Thank you. Thank you, Peter. Go ahead, please. Hi there. Um, I don't know if it's possible, but if you can figure out a way, I, I don't know Zoom that well, but if you could figure out a way so that when you tune it, turn on early, that everybody's muted. So that way I don't like today, I don't have to hear Richard Niederberg insulting me if I uh, come into the meeting early. Um, that I think that would be a good thing. Also, I sent you guys uh, an email about leaf blowers. And really the, pro the point of it is there's lots of things in our neighborhoods that I think we can all be mindful of and go, hey, what if, because you have a special position on the neighborhood council and have access to people that perhaps I don't as a stakeholder directly, that you look around your neighborhoods, you find something that, that you can help and improve. And each one of you board members should champion an idea and try and bring it to the board and do something for your community. That will mean so much more than signing these, not that they're nothing, but the CISs and the blah, blah, blah. Actually do something for your community. And Brandon, nice faces. Uh, um, as a, uh, uh, a guy in animation, I, I should have fun with that. Quite disgusting display for a vice president and an outreach chair. Thank you. Patty, go ahead, please. Hi, everybody. I, I just wanted to say, uh, <clears throat> Randy did apologize to me in person. Uh, privately, but I had asked him to apologize to me publicly, but since he's not here, I just wanted to make that point. And the other thing is that I'd like to get cleared up uh, that whole issue uh, that was brought up about committee members suggesting motions and working on motions, um, just to clear it up for future so we don't have this situation happen again. Thank you. Thank you, Patty. Anybody else from the public? Let me lower Patty's hand. Call in user one. Go ahead, please. Hi, can you hear me? Yes, we hear you. This is Ruth. Hi. Um, I had submitted an email about um, the Valley of Change, um, getting it like MPG. I, I asked Julie Houlihan to email me, I think, last meeting, but I haven't heard from her. Um, but I wanted to, like, since I'm not a committee member, right, I can say that, like, I think that they should get an MPG. I think um, another thing, I, I wanted to try to get the light on Ventura and on the river back on as soon as possible. There was an unsolved murder at Laurel and the Greenway. And um, I think the lights being out since 2019 has a lot to do with it. And I think that they can be improved without displacing any of the other unhoused people. Thank you. And thank you for that. Anybody else from the public care to make a comment? There was somebody who the previous caller just mentioned, I see that person in the attendees list. If that person would like to speak, please raise your hand. Not seeing any hands raised, public comment on non-agenda items is now closed. Moving on to number eight, announcements by government representatives. I see George, I'm gonna promote George to a panelist. And I did see Jason earlier from Supervisor Barger's office. Jason is not on right now. That's too bad. I wanted to thank Jason for getting a cleanup crew out to the LA River South Bank between Colfax and Tahunga. It was, I think, two or three days after the request and crews came out and you wouldn't even recognize that it's the same area uh, alongside the LA River. So Jason, I'm sorry you're still not on the call, but we do want to thank you for what you were able to arrange over there. George, go ahead and uh, tell us what you have to update us on. Oh, okay. Are you able to hear me okay? 
We hear you, George. Go ahead. Oh, I'm usually promoted as a panelist, um, so you won't be able to see me today. Um, but um, here to give I'll, updates I'll, nonetheless. I'm promoting you. All right, all right. I'll join. Give me a second. Hey, take the promotion. Great. Um, and my family did just arrive from the office, and my dogs are going berserk right now from the office from grocery stores. Um, but you know, I just, I did want to highlight uh, um, you know, what Brandon said earlier about the movie night. Our office helped in securing the the taco vendors, um, and we're incredibly again thankful for Abby and all her dedication and support throughout this entire thing. She really was hurting all the cats, and um, you know, so much kudos to to her. Um, and so, yeah, I just want to make sure that that's really promoted. I'll be sending out a newsletter tomorrow um, to, to further promote that and try to get that on our social media uh, as well. We did, <laughs> we did go door knocking uh, around the neighborhood uh, from apartment buildings to homeowners to promote the, the event. So far, we have 160 RSVPs uh, before that. So, you know, that's, that's good news. Um, definitely better. Uh, weather than uh, two weeks ago. So uh, that's what I wanted to say. Um, one note that I did want to mention as well is the Halloween block parties. Um, obviously, since we're new here, since post redistricting, we're unsure if there are any block parties that happen in or around the neighborhood. We want to make sure that if there are any parties that happen or block parties that Studio City puts on, that we want to identify where they might be so we can get proper street closures we can let the other community members know and of course we want to uh you know participate if if given the chance uh so feel free to email me for for any of those that that you may see that are upcoming um transportation related news the long awaited day that we all hope for has finally arrived and the department of transportation will be opening their 2022 residential speed hump program the application will open at 9 a.m. Uh, PST on October 6, 2022. The link to the application will be on their website at ladot.lacity.org forward slash projects forward slash safety dash programs forward slash speed humps. But I'm sure a quick Google search on <laughs> LADOT speed humps will get you right there as well. Um, at this website, you can access their fact sheet aligning their request and approval process. And of course, uh, feel free to let us our office know if and once and once you do submit a submission, um, just so we're aware as well. Um, we do also want to stress that until DLT engineers take a detailed look, one can't definitively say that a street would or would not be able to have a speed hump implemented. So in that sense, do not rule yourself out if it does look intimidating um, and allow DLT to carefully review each individual request. Um, with all that being said, I'll keep it short and sweet tonight and uh, open to any questions or comments you may all have. Uh, thanks, George. Anyone from the public have a question for, for George CD4? Please raise your hand. Not seeing any hands, public comments closed. How about anyone from the board? Ira, go ahead. George, hey, how you doing? Hey, good, good. Hey, so I don't know if this is in, I haven't checked. So I don't know if this is in your jurisdiction. My apologies. Uh, those, those, I mean, any updates on what we can do with those lights, the lights that have been out, any way we can expedite it, especially in light of, of uh, a, a major crime? What, what can we do about this? Yeah, no, that's a, that's a great question. Um, some full transparency here. We talk to BSL bi-weekly or almost even weekly if they'll have us. They're getting to street lines that are submitted as of January. As you know, we're in September. And although our office did put in discretionary funding to pay for overtime, um, we submitted that request in April and it's September and it still hasn't been repaired. So all that, the good and well, not so good, but the bad and the ugly is that even when we do put our own funding and overtime into BSL, the fact is that they're being played by personnel shortages and, you know, not being able to get to, to the inspection and the field crew, um, you know, out there in time. What I do want to know is that you know, as always, we have our own BSL internal tracker. So if you submit a 311 request um, and, and 
send it my way. We keep a track of it. And if it's longer than six months or something, you know, we'll, <laughs> we'll, we'll get it there. But, you know, I do want to leave off with some good news and not just have some look of despairs on you. Um, but we're going to be working on some legislative, uh, you know, news or some legislative action to get this up and running because like you all, we don't want our streets to remain dark, especially with the new time changes right ahead of us. So we're gonna be meeting with the GM of street lighting to hopefully have better news and illuminate the situation. Thank you. Kim, go ahead. And then Julie. Just a quick question. What is BSL for those uh, who may not know? Sorry, I speak jargon all day. <laughs> uh, Bureau of Street Lighting. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And Julie, and then Brandon. Okay, thank you for being here, George. Uh, I have two questions and I'll just give them both to you. Um, we have one stakeholder who, who calls in quite a bit asking about um, landlords who take vouchers. She mentions that a lot of people have vouchers and they, they still can't get housing with them. I'm just wondering what, if anything, can we do or what is being done? How do people find voucher takers? And on the other, the sort of flip side of that is that there are new uh, laws in place with regard to 4118 and encampments. And we have been active in calling in certain areas and there's a lot of frustration that I know probably government officials such as yourself share that there's no power of enforcement and I just wonder if you can address the process uh, of that. Great questions yeah um, the first question I think we might have to dive deeper a little bit because as far as I know um, there maybe isn't like a, a city implementation to, to identify which landlords uh, accept vouchers. Um, but if you can, you know, give them my email and we'll, we'll talk and I'll get them connected with our, um, our planning department and see if there is a resource like that available, um, at least within our district. So that's what I would say on the first end. Uh, the second and, and uh, about 4118 and enforcement actions, um, there are a couple of amendments to 4118 and I'll try to keep it uh, short and sweet. The first one is um, encampment zones where there is a sign up and any sign within 500 feet, um, LAPD is within their, their you know, full discretion to cite and enforce those encampment zones. Our office, as you know, doesn't really adhere to those 4118 signs because we find them ineffective and we find them to not only continue displacing people but have our housing uh, case managers who work to connect them to housing resources make their lives incredibly difficult because they never understand where they're at and further delays the housing process. Um, if relations to the recent 4118 amendments with the schools and daycare, that one did pass uh, city council, but it has no ties to the council office. So with that being said, LAPD, if you call LAPD and say, there's a, a daycare there, uh, there's a homeless person in a daycare, there's a homeless person within 500 feet of, of a school, they have the full discretion to go and enforce those those policies without our approval and to make that clear you know we we don't have any any say when it comes to enforcing the policies when it comes to schools or daycares um happy to elaborate or take this offline if, if there's any more questions you may have but i want to keep it <laughs> as as uh, succinct as possible it, it's a can of worms for sure um but yeah, I, yeah. from the from the police officers that when you say enforce, really all they can do is possibly write a ticket if exactly. they happen or if they mm -hmm. find drugs, but they can't enforce um, them, them moving their location. Yeah, yeah, that's with a series of court laws that has long been since we took over the office that you can't really remove anybody, you know, you can't really remove anybody who is experiencing homelessness from the streets um, because it is illegal, so. Um, yeah, citation is usually the only form of enforcement that would be carried through. Yeah. Thank you. Mm -hmm. We'll have uh, Brandon, Jeff, then Ira, and we still have one person with their hand up back for public comment. So let's try to keep 
be as brief as possible. I know these are important questions, but uh, go ahead. First off, I want to recognize George's pun, well played. Also, <laughs> a couple of things. Um, the Speed Hub, the LA Department of Transportation Speed Hub program. We had a motion a while back. I know Kim talked about it regarding a street south of Universal Studios that, were, that was looking for um, speed humps. Um, it took forever, I believe. Is this speed hump program, does it accelerate the process? Is it something that's unique where they streamline it so you can get it faster during this timeline? And um, also another question is, um, have the, apparently CD4's field offices are moving closer to me in Studio City. Has that been um, settled yet? Are you, have you, are you guys making the move? Thank you. Yeah, great question, Brandon. Um, the DLT, pro the speed hump process, um, I would just side in the, in the, you know, with caution and saying that it's very unpredictable with how fast they're going to accelerate the process. Um, the, you know, the, the most conscious, I guess, um, advice we would give is that if your whole block um, can support and get signatures with the speed hump, I think that would be the most effective way to secure a speed hump. But again, it all depends on DLT and their engineers and evaluating each specific uh, speed hump. As you probably would know, the entire <laughs> neighborhood, and not just here, but entire city of LA is probably going to be um, trying to take advantage of it. So. Um, I can definitely continue asking on your behalf, but I would I wouldn't fully understand their process internally. Um, our office, yeah, we are excited to 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 try to open up. Um, it sometimes may be a little bit of our hands because we have to go through the leasing program through GSD, um, and we're still waiting for them to to work out um, all the agreements with the property owners. But we're hopeful to bring it live. Oh, <laughs> I I ain't giving dates. January maybe, but um, again, we'll we'll continue letting. As soon as we're open, Brandon, you, you and Scott and everybody here will be the first to know. So <laughs> rest assured, we're we're also waiting for those days. Jeff, then Ira. Hi George, good to see you. Um, quick question about the Greenway revitalization. Any updates for us about that? Uh, there there were some graffiti issues, and I know that. Uh, some monies were budgeted to to redo the whole area. Can you do you have any uh, inside information on that? Thank you. Yeah, of course. Um, so the budget allocation is still there. We made sure to check in with RAP to ensure that the money is not going to go anywhere and it just doesn't do, disappear into thin air. Um, well, internally, what we want to align with is we did secure 1.7 million grant from the governor's office. So we want to make sure that when we and that's to um, find a creative approach to tackling the unhoused community within the river. So we want to make sure that when we do the revitalization, it also syncs up with the efforts we are doing to ensure everybody along the river who is experiencing homelessness gets the services and gets indoors. Um, that way is just like a, a, a one hit plan. Um, and so um, we're still also, you know, just waiting for, for those to really come through. But um, Jeff, you know what? I We should also talk offline because our capital improvement projects, uh, deputy, would also know more about that and we can we can talk to discuss if there's anything you see that might be an improvement in that project. Sounds good, thank you. Thank you. Ira, go ahead, please. Cool. Hey, George, I, I, I'm gonna let, um, obviously with, with, with your and Scott's permission uh, and if you deem it uh, appropriate or not, I'd really very much like to be there when you discuss with the, with the, um, the street light manager just, I think it would be, I could be silent. I just think it would be great that government on a local level, as well as a district level uh, is there. It just might be a, 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 I don't wanna say show of force, but at least uh, some kind of unity. Um, I, I, I think it'd be, I don't know if it would make any kind of difference, but I think it, I think it would be nice. Um, uh, I don't know, maybe it's effective. Again, I'll leave that up to you and Scott. Um, if you want to loop me in on that, I'd very much appreciate it, but I'd very much like to be there. Thanks. Yeah, no, that's a, that's a great, um, I think what I've seen in other neighborhood councils is they do invite DOT representatives like Brian Gallagher from the, or Brian Gallagher from the Hollywood division, um, or DWP from, from, you know, a different neighborhood. So what I can do is bring them to you <laughs> and, um, ask them if, if they'll be able to attend uh, a neighborhood council. The only thing I would ask is 
you know, bring them to the top of the agenda so they're not uh, going through everything. But that's definitely an ask. I can ask a BSL to further explain their process, what they think would be most helpful, and of course, what you can do as residents to ensure that we're also making their lives a little bit easier. Um, so I'll, I'll put that on my um, on my to do list to do, if that's okay. I, I don't know if. No, that's great. Kind of, yes. Great. Thank you. And we'll put them high up on the agenda. <laughs> uh, we're going to go to call in user one. Go ahead. Hi, I'm Ruth and I'm on a house in Studio City. I lived in public for several years here. Um, I know that there was a 311 request submitted back in, I think it was early November of 2019, when one of those stretches of light. Uh, went dark and um, I'm just wondering like how come you know it's, it's taken this long when when we've done those things that were suggested like 311 and now it's escalated to like somebody getting killed I, I know that things take time but like there was no one apprehended for this murder um, which means that they could very well still be um, terrorizing people and it's a little frustrating to hear like that um, the people that were victimized and that witnessed the situation do not qualify apparently for like witness or victim services including housing um it's really also frustrating to hear capital improvement projects and um basically being like put against the presence of unhoused people because like, like I know that I worked with Jessica in Council District 2 to get trash cans emptied along the river. I've worked on trying to get the lights back on. I don't think that we have to be like the opposite of capital improvement. I think that both can exist, especially when we don't qualify for anything else, which has over and over been the case. Like I, I wanna be wrong about that. And I hope that this state grant has some housing in it, but like, I don't know where that housing would be. I, I don't see it creating additional housing that doesn't exist yet. Thank you. Great, thank you for your comment. And I understand your frustration and your concerns. And you know, I just want to be clear that we are looking with this grant to place them indoors. We're still, you know, working with different case managers and different housing uh, service providers to ensure that we find the most appropriate and most sustainable way to keep them um, indoors with a long-term uh, plan to to continue helping them indoors in whatever capacity of help they may need. Um, I didn't really see a question in there, but I just, I do wanna communicate with you that I'm always available to talk if you wanna you know, seek any other improvements that you think is, is necessary. Um, maybe one note about the uh, the crime that, that you mentioned, Officer Smith is a great uh, you know, partner with us and we do wanna you know, work with him ensuring that crime like this isn't happening and then you know what, what we can do as a council office to better support him and his team so um you know i just want to leave it at that and of course i'm not sure if my email is on the agenda but if it's not i i you know it's george j-o-r-g-e dot placencia p-l-a-s-c-e-n-c-i-a at lacity.org and always available to, to chat great thank you george i think uh I think that's it. You're free to go. Thanks for for the uh, very uh, well informed update. And Great. Uh, thank you all. Get to my constituent in the back. <laughs> Take care, all. Thank you, George. Not seeing any other public officials in the attendees. We're going to move on to item nine: transportation committee. Barry, go ahead, please. Hi, so we have one motion this month. Um, I'll go ahead and read it. And um, it is on these council files, a number of neighborhood councils have chimed in. So let me read the motion. The board of the Studio City Neighborhood Council, SCNC, opposes council files 20-1536, 20-1536-S, and 20 dash 1536-S2 for a sidewalk and transit amenities program, STAP, 
due to safety, liability, and aesthetic impacts of digital advertising screens in bus shelters. Studies have shown that changing digital ad screens are particularly dangerous as they are designed to distract drivers and result in harm to traffic safety. The SCNC further opposes provisions for cell phone tracking in bus shelters that can be shared with the contractor for ad targeting. This motion is also to be submitted as separate community impact statement, CIS to CF 20-1536, 20-1536-S1, and 20-1536-S2. And I will say that we had submitted a previous CIS on this issue in the past, but it was not on this, these specific council files that um, I now have just seen, you know, more neighborhood councils doing CISs on this one than I've seen in a long time on many issues. Scott? Thank you, Barry. Uh, we're going to go to public comment now on nine. The motion you just heard uh, Barry read regarding sidewalk and transit amenities program. Anyone from the public who'd like to comment, comment on this agenda item, please raise your hand. Not seeing any hands, we'll go to the board. Brandon, go ahead, please. Yeah, a question for Barry. Um, I don't know if you know the um, budget allocated for these, um, these, sh these um, bus shelters, but I would assume that considering so many bus shelters I see with damaged signs, people kicking them in, people doing all sorts of things, I would think, say, if a bus shelter costs $5,000, it's costing a lot more. It's going through the city of L.A., obviously. I'm just throwing out a number here. Would the actual cost of bus, shel bus shelter over time for fixing these screens, replacing these screens, cost triple or quadruple that amount? Um, would that be factored in? to the um, overall budget, because this just seems like a target for individuals who want to do harm to something that looks incredibly expensive. Thank you. Barry, did you have anything to say about? Um, yeah, just um, the, the one of these, the um, dash, either the dash S1 or dash S2 is, um, with the contractor that is doing that would be doing this um and there is they are responsible for these signs that's not to say that they're not if they get vandalized they're not going to turn around and come to the city screaming oh we can't afford to pay for this so um it's something waiting to happen that's going to end up costing more probably because they're the video screens are a lot more expensive than what we have in bus shelters now, which is essentially a glass covered poster um, that doesn't change. So um, yeah, there's, there's all kinds of possibilities. Um, although the city's gonna say, well, you're making money off the advertising, so you better keep them up um, and repair them. So. But the, the council files do not address that. Are there any other board comments or questions before we vote? I will just add to Brandon's point, I do see quite a bit of the bus shelters that uh, Barry just described, the posters covered in glass that are continually, continually vandalized, broken glass all over the place. Uh, even the trash cans next to them are overturned and graffiti and such. And this is in Studio City. So it's it's a good point. These will be a even bigger target now. Kim? Thanks. I just, I absolutely agree with this. I think that these things are, are terribly distracting. And uh, frankly, it, it just, it creates a lot of noise. Uh, you know, even if, you know, there's no sound, there's a lot of action and noise, kind of a lot of stimuli. And I, I can't stand them. I I think aesthetically they're terrible and would have, I just think they're awful. So thank you for bringing this forward uh, as a motion. Appreciated. Thanks. 
Thanks, Kim. I think we're ready to vote on this. All right, uh, so this would be motion 9A um, to, a yes vote would be in opposition to the STAP program or the digital advertising program. Um, Kim Clements. Yes. Dean Cutler. Yes. Randall Freed absent. Ira Gold. Yes. Jeff Hardwick, yes. Julie Houlihan. Yes. Scott Mandel. Yes. Chip Meehan, absent. Brandon Marino. Yes. Richard Niederberg. Yes. Karen Cero is absent. Adam Summer. Yes. Uh, quick question. We need eight as our quorum, right? Yes. Okay, so if anybody leaves this meeting, then we can't, we have no quorum. We have nine right now. Okay, not just, um, I was just saying that I think I need to be out of here by 10, I have a flight, so I don't know if that makes a difference. I'll, I can stay on the phone, but I'll be in an Uber probably, so that's all. Uh, Alexis Steinberg is absent. Abigail Velasco is absent. The motion passes. Great, uh, item 10, government affairs. We continue with Barry. So government affairs has one motion tonight. This comes to us via uh, two or three stakeholders that have sent in comments to the board, which I was forwarded. Um, and I've also been contacted by some people in residential neighborhoods that have uh, um, understood parking from restaurants during the height of COVID, but don't understand it now. So thus, this motion. The Board of the Studio City Neighborhood Council, SCNC, opposes Council Files 20-1074-S2, 20-1074-S3, 20-1074, and 20-1074-S1, unless all pre-COVID required private parking spaces and all pre- COVID street parking spaces are returned to their original pre-COVID status. While the SCNC in no way opposes legitimate ADA compliant sidewalk dining, the lack of required par private parking spaces and street parking spaces are causing severe parking impacts in adjacent residential neighborhoods. While we understand the need for dining in the street during the pandemic, the time has now come to resume pre-COVID parking requirements. This motion is also to be submitted as a separate community impact statements, CIS to CF 20-1074-S2, 20-1074-S3, 20-1074, and 20-1074-S1. Scott? Thank you for that, Barry. We will now go to public comment on the item that you just heard. We're talking about sidewalk and street dining and parking pre-COVID, post-COVID. You have one minute, 30 seconds. Goat puppet business. Go ahead, please. <laughs> Where the hell are you been? <laughs> I've been at the debate. That's where everybody is. But Brandon wasn't invited. No, Scott was, but he decided to be here with you, you losers. <laughs> now, as you know, I've signed up as a business nigger tonight because I've been driving down Ventura Boulevard and noticing all of this COVID shit is still there. No parking. And they have signs with a little plate and a fork and a spoon on it. We need to get rid of all of it. Go back before COVID. President Biden, I have a recording. Here's what he said. Uh, everybody, I'm here to tell you COVID is over and it was a hoax. Thank you. Isn't that a great recording? Yes, I wish I could play it again. So the COVID is over and it's been over. But today at the city council, your leader, Nuri Luisa Martinez, doing business as Bimbo, extended it for another 30 days. 
So remember, you have to categorize your motion with that. We are still under this fake emergency status. Go Puppet moves that this motion be tabled for 30 days to see if any new city council members get indicted and we can end the emergency. In the emergency, restore order. Keep the emergency. Continue. Next with the time, please conclude your comment. Yeah, it's a good idea. Yes, we'll see what they do. Yes, via Nueva for sheriff <laughs> because I'm evil. Melanie, go ahead, please. Thanks. Um, I take issue with the sort of blanket statement about that is severely impacting adjacent residential neighborhoods. I live immediately adjacent to several of these referenced um, establishments and not experiencing that at all. Um, I am very much along with many of my neighbors enjoying the expanded outdoor dining um, in the extreme. <laughs> I might say several businesses have, have grown and thrived because of it. And I'm generally speaking, always interested in prioritizing uh, people over automobiles and the life of the community and the, the experience of the, of the people who live and shop and work here and the thriving of the businesses as opposed to the convenience of the automobile. So I just wanted to weigh in as someone who should be immediately affected by this extreme inconvenience of a lot of extra parking in the adjacent neighborhoods and who is absolutely not but who has been positively impacted along with several of my neighbor businesses by the ability to expand outdoor dining. And I don't like this motion to condition its continuation upon prioritizing the convenience of automobiles. Thanks. Anybody else from the public wish to comment on this? Call in user one. Go ahead, please. Call in user one, unmute yourself. Hello? Yes. Okay, sorry. Hey, it's Ruth. So I have a huge issue with LA Al Fresco, and it's really, really simple. They're allowed to have like a structure up on the sidewalk, and it's totally fine. It's not an ADA violation. But an unhoused person who's trying to eat their lunch or have a tent or whatever is not allowed to do it. I, I, just, I, I, I can't get over the fact that like we're not trying to issue permits to say a tent that has a disabled person in it that's applied for housing and is on a waiting list and that can't really move and, and is doing everything they can. Like we should be giving them a free permit to be there because they're not an ADA violation. A lot of times they're the ones who are disabled and 43% of unhoused people in LA have a physical disability according to USICH. So that is my issue with LA Al Fresco. Thank you. Uh, thank you for that. Not seeing any more hands from the public. We'll go on to board comments. Brandon, go ahead. Thanks. Um, I, I, I actually appreciate Ruth's comments. I think that was something that was mentioned in the Government Affairs Committee meeting, if I'm not mistaken. But one thing we did talk about was a little while back, there was an, um, um, an attorney's office, I guess they were an attorney's, um, Handy Potter, I think their name was, out of um, San Diego, that would go around to small businesses and they would hire people to use the restroom. And if the restroom was not ADK compliant, they would go after the small business and the city of Los Angeles did little or nothing to assist the small business. And finally, after a while, I believe both um, Los Angeles, and I want to say Orange County, if I'm not mistaken, finally cracked down on this um, law firm out of San Diego. I could be mistaken on that. But there was nothing in this um, council file to protect small businesses from that ever happening again. Like if you've got a lot of people during um, a, a busy lunch session or early dinner session and people, when they're eating, they tend to kick out their chairs a little bit and take up a lot of space. If you can't quite navigate around that, if you have a wheelchair, 
that could be an ADA violation. I think that's why we put there opposes, we do in no way oppose legitimate ADA compliant sidewalk dining, but it does open up these small businesses for um, um, litigation. And there's nothing in the council file from what I understand that might offset that. So um, that's one of the problems we had with this. Thank you. Any other board members want to comment on this? Kim, go ahead. When I first read this, uh, I as well wondered about it. The businesses have thrived with it and people do love it. We're in Southern California where the weather's usually lovely and most of the time, and, and I'm. it's amazing how few restaurants actually have outdoor space. Um, so that I, I really, yeah, I'm still not exactly sure how I'm feeling on this to get rid of all, uh, to restore all parking pre-COVID. And even though, and I thank you, Brandon, for explaining that not against ADA compliant, um, but it, it I, I think there's, I, sorry that I'm stumbling. I'm just trying to get my words. I, I think there would, should be a happy medium um, I think we've all found that we really like this outdoor uh, dining and the businesses like it and are doing better with it too. So, and as much as I hate the traffic and the God, Ventura Boulevard through the busiest part of Studio City there is just a nightmare. And with valet, um, uh, people waiting for valet in a, in a traffic lane, it has been awful. We definitely have a problem um, with parking and uh, with the traffic, but I don't know if taking away. I'm not. I'm not completely um, on board with with taking away this outdoor dining yet. I don't know what the answer is, but I'm. I'm just. I'm not so sure on this one here. Scott, can I make a clarification? Yeah. Uh, sure. Unless you want to. You want to wait until everyone has spoken, or you want to do that? No. I just, just. All I was going to say is the happy medium is the fact that they have sidewalk dining and some of these restaurants have triple the original capacity of their indoor restaurant by having sidewalk dining and parking lot dining it's you know you don't need triple your occupancy to make a buck you know they've got most of these places went to sidewalk dining and parking, but the sidewalk dining's already giving them a lot more seating space. And plus, remember, this all happened when there was no dining inside. Now they've got dining inside and outside that they didn't have during the initial beginning of the pandemic. Ira? So I, I'm a COVID conscious guy. Uh, so I, I only eat at restaurants and on, on patios. Um, that's just my, how I personally, uh, uh, my comfort level. So I love that there's all this dining outside on patios. That means I can still go out. However, I've also spoken to several businesses, um, especially some of the smaller businesses on, uh, on Tahunga, over in Tahunga Village. And um, uh, several people, several business owners have actually expressed to me that this is hurting their business because there's, and I've actually experienced it myself, um, and trying to frequent some of these these establishments, um, they're saying that there's 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 no parking. So people that might go in there, walk inside, spend five ten minutes shopping, and then come back to the car and leave are being deterred. For example, on several occasions, I've actually gone to um, one or two establishments in particular there that weren't necessarily sit down restaurants, and I couldn't find a parking space anywhere, not on the street not on an adjacent street. I even tried the residential neighborhood, which I know a lot of people uh, dislike, and I couldn't find it. And it was on more than one occasion. So what ended up happening is I just didn't go to that establishment. Um, and so there's, there's another side to this as well. And, I, and uh, um, it's been expressed to me that it has hurt some of the smaller businesses there. It's great for these, for the restaurants. And I bet, me personally, I benefit only because I, that's the only place I go is the, the restaurants where I can eat outside. Um, but I think we should also think of the, 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 the restaurants or, or the, the establishments that are hurting because of this. And I think uh, I, I like this motion because a byproduct would be um, more space for, for these other establishments. Thank you. And Julie? 
Thank you. Yeah, I was torn about this motion in committee also because I am a person who really enjoys the outdoor eating as well. Um, anytime that I can make that choice, that's what I do. I also have a person in my house right now who's quarantined with COVID. So in my estimation we are not post-COVID <laughs> at all. I keep knowing a lot of people who still have COVID. Um, so it is a, a tough choice for me. At the end of the day in committee, I did vote for it. And it is because like Ira, I have trouble parking all the time um, whenever I go out in Studio City. So I would like to see some of the parking restored while still maintaining, I think some outdoor dining that doesn't block the sidewalk. And I, I would like to just mention that, that it does have to be ADA compliant. It cannot block the sidewalk. That's part of the motion. So I just wanna express that I understand both sides of this issue. I think it's not an easy motion to vote on, but I think I, I'm gonna go in, in favor of of parking. Thanks, Julie. Uh, I'll just make a couple quick points. As far as the sidewalk dining, obviously there's no effect on parking spots. And in one of the motions, there's like an 80 page report from the city that outlines how the restaurants have to apply for an ADA uh, permit. People come out and measure the sidewalk and they instruct them on where they're allowed to place their tables and umbrellas and such. So there is no um, ADA issues with legal permitted, city permitted dining. Uh, the other issue is street dining, like we see on Tahunga, where the city removes a lane of parking and a lane of traffic. They put the K rails in and the tables are actually in what used to be a lane of traffic. And that removes all the metered spots that were the spots for people who would uh, come and use some of the, the businesses that didn't have parking lots. Then there's the dining in the parking lots themselves. There's one on, on Tahunga as well, where there's dining in the parking lot and the valet parkers will then take the cars and put them in the residential neighborhood. That is the primary issue that, in fact, the board has actually received, if you've seen some of the emails we've gotten from people who live near the establishments that use their their parking lots where the cars go. Now, I ride public transportation more than most. And I can tell you that I've never seen someone take the bus to go to any of our restaurants on Ventura Boulevard or uh, uh, Ventura Place or to, uh, Tahunga. Uh, people drive there and they need to park. And if there's tables in their parking lot, they're going to park in the residential areas. And if they have valet parking, then those, those establishments aren't hurt. And I think it was Ira who alluded to the establishments that don't have valet parking, their customers have nowhere to go. So as far as the COVID there, you are now allowed to dine indoors. So there is an increased capacity in dining with the sidewalk. And if they've taken their parking lot, there's nowhere for the cars to go. So I'll just close with that. And if there are any other board comments, I think we're ready for a vote. Unless Barry, did you have any final remark to make on this before we vote? No, I think you covered it. Okay, let's vote on this uh, item 10A. All right, item 10A, a yes vote would oppose the various council files unless all pre-COVID required private and street parking spaces are returned to their original pre-COVID status. Kim Clements. Yes. Dean Cutler. Dean? I'll take that as a yes, you're muted. Randall Freed is absent. Ira Gold? Yes. Jeff Harwick, yes. Julie Houlihan? Yes. Scott Mandel? Yes. Chip Meehan is absent. Brandon Marino? Yes. Richard Niederberg. Yes. Karen Cerro is absent. Adam Summer. No. Alexa Steinberg is absent. Abigail Velasco is absent. The motion passes.
Thank you, Barry. We are now moving on to item 11, public safety. Take it away, Jeff. All right, motion 11A, the board of the Studio City Neighborhood Council, SCNC supports council file 22-0002-S101 title, AB 1740, Murat, Suchi, AB 2407, O'Donnell, and SB 1087, Gonzalez. Use catalytic converter sales. There's been a rash of automobile catalytic converter thefts throughout the city of Los Angeles. Criminals steal them for their precious metal content. Many residents of Studio City have been victims of these thefts and replacement parts are expensive. Currently, there are three bills in the state legislature that address this problem. AB 1740 would require a core recycler accepting catalytic converters to maintain a written record that contains the year, make, and model number and requires the owner to enter into a transaction. AB 2407 would require a recycler to report information on the purchase and sale of catalytic converters to law enforcement and to obtain the thumbprint of sellers. SB 1087 would require a traceable method of payment for these special parts and permit the purchase of converters only from specified sellers. Collectively, these bills will help stop this epidemic of thievery and prevent criminals from profiting from selling stolen converters. This motion is also to be submitted as a community impact statement CIS to Council File 22-0002-S101. Um, I think the motion is pretty self-explanatory. I mean, every day you go on to next door and you see the latest um, incident of catalytic converter uh, thefts. Uh, many of my community, many of my neighbors have been victims of this. I'm sure even some board members have been victims of this, this crime. So right now the penalties are fairly minimal and uh, this will... Um, place more stringent penalties on the criminals, A and B, it would require more reporting. And so if a criminal does take um, the converter to a recycler, there has to be a, a record. It can only be uh, bought from uh, an owner of a vehicle, et cetera, et cetera. So this will tighten the laws and hopefully make our lives better. Thank you. Thanks, Jeff. We'll go to public comment on this item. If anyone has any comment regarding the legislation to tackle the catalytic converter theft problem, please raise your hand. Go puppet business, go ahead, please. It's big business, especially in CD1. You just drive on South Hoover and turn on Carondelet. There's a tent. And what happens there? Well, a bunch of expensive looking cars get dropped off on all hours of the day for a catalytic converter replacement. <laughs> yes, and then the truck, the beautiful truck, drives it back to the dealership. <laughs> and then here comes the sucker with the bill, as they say. Oh, thank you. How much was my bill? And the dealer says, well, you're a nice lady. I'll give you 15% off the bill. Oh, thank you. Well, of course you will. You bought it for a hundred bucks and a head of crack, dummy. <laughs> yes. Now, since Gold Puppet's been talking about this, uh, did, I, I drove there today with, along with my friend. And what did you see? <laughs> All of a sudden, there's no business. Yes, that's right. See, everybody listens to Gold Puppet when he talks about new businesses popping up without permits. <laughs> Yes, but the thumbprint won't work. No, the answer is buy American. <laughs> the only goddamn problem are these Japanese and, to and little Toyotas and shit like that. Next time, buy, please include buy, your comment. Buy American, because American cars are shit and nobody wants any parts off of them. <laughs> hey, good idea. Yes, like, like the shit you drive. <laughs> hey, wait a minute. I'm your friend. Anybody else from the public have any comment regarding catalytic converter theft? 
Not seeing any hands raised, public comment is closed. We'll go to the board. Does anyone have anything to add or can we go right to a vote? Not seeing any hands up, let's vote on this item. All right, again, the vote is motion 11A, which would support these bills, uh, which would uh, increase penalties for Catholic and River theft. Kim Clements. Yes. Dean Cutler. Dean's mic is not working. I'll take that as a yes, thank you. Randall Fried is absent. Ira Gold. Yes. Jeff Harwick, yes. Julie Houlihan. Yes. Scott Mandel. Yes. Chip Meehan is absent. Brenda Marino. Yes. Richard Niederberg. Yes. Karen Cerro is absent. Adam Summer. Yes. Alexis Steinberg and Abigail Velasco are absent. The motion passes. Moving right along to motion 11B, the Board of the Studio City Neighborhood Council, SCNC, supports Council File 22-0797, Title of Legal Dumping, Multi-Jurisdictional Locations, Los Angeles County, California Department of Transportation, Caltrans, Memorandum of Understanding. The City of Los Angeles Sanitation Department, LA San, not only collects residential waste, but also abandoned and illegally dumped trash. Waste items left outside of city jurisdiction presents problems of coordination with county and state areas, which can result in lack of timely collection. This has been evident at local homeless encampments near freeway on and off ramps. It therefore makes sense for the city to have LA San report on one, efforts to coordinate trash collection with Caltrans, and two, the feasibility of entering into Memorandum of Understanding, MOU, with Los Angeles County and Caltrans to facilitate illegal dumping removal. This motion is also to be submitted as a Community Impact Statement CIS to Council File 22-0797. Again, this motion is pretty self-explanatory. There's kind of a, a rash of illegal dumping. And regarding the various homeless encampments, there's often there are often jurisdictional issues as you all know with the city the county the state and it um uh, there are difficulties in getting many of these encampments cleaned up because of these jurisdictional issues uh, this would result in a cord better coordination of these sanitation pickups so there should be some kind of multi uh, jurisdictional understanding so that everyone can be on the same page and the uh the situation can be quickly and efficiently remedied. That's it, thanks. Thank you, Jeff. Call in user one. If you have a comment, go ahead, unmute yourself. Hi, okay, so yeah, I've been just minding my own business at like at my house and like a car will come up and unload a bunch of furniture on me. And it's the most frustrating thing in the world. This happened before I got the trash can emptied weekly and we had to put the stuff in like a bike trailer and cart it off like a mile away just to get rid of it. And it was so annoying. Um, but like a lot of the times the encampment needs trash pickup anyway. Like every encampment should have access to a dumpster or something that gets emptied regularly. Um, that's it, thank you. Go puppet business. Go ahead, please unmute yourself. <laughs> Yes, well, there is a cooperation agreement. It works perfect. Just go down the south of the 101 on the south side from Corbin Avenue <laughs> all the way to Haskell. Yes, those are the wealthy Jewish enclaves. <laughs> and you should see how clean those state highway side meridians are. And then on the other side, the city comes around twice a week and cleans it up, and even sidewalk sweeps, too. <laughs> but to qualify for this program, however, you have to meet certain conditions. <laughs> you have to be the right color. <laughs> you have to go to the right church, and we're not talking about the Jesus one. <laughs> yes, that's what we have redlining, people. 
Now, Goat Puppet did an experiment. Yes, I went down the 10 freeway, behind the 10 freeway, and I looked at the situation there. And you know what I found? <laughs> I found that the homeless will simply move away three feet when the city comes and back three feet when the state comes. And the tents don't get removed and they expand. And then one night they set a fire. Yes. But that doesn't happen in Tarzana and Encino Sherman Way, provided you meet the right racial and religious requirements. And that's time. <laughs> Please conclude your comments. And of course, home value. You know, we're not talking about the ghetto here. We're talking about the beautiful people. Let's make the beautiful people all of Los Angeles. <laughs> that was wonderful. Thank you. Anyone else in the public have a comment on this before we go to the board? Not seeing any hands, public comments closed. Any board comment or are we able to go to a vote on this? I think we're able to go to a vote. Vote is for motion 11B. A yes vote would be to support LA Sands report on coordinating in a better way trash collection efforts with other jurisdictions. Kim Clements. Yes. Dean Cutler, you can thumbs up or thumbs down. Still can't hear you, Dean. I think that was a yes. Thank you, Dean. Randy Freed is absent. Ira Gold. Yes. Jeff Harwick, yes. Julie Houlihan. Yes. Scott Mandel. Yes. Chip Meehan is absent. Brandon Marino. Yes. Richard Niederberg. Yes. Karen Cyril is absent. Adam Summer. Yes. And Alexa Steinberg and Abigail Velasco are absent. The motion passes. You guys are getting sick of hearing my voice. The next motion. 11C, the board of the Studio City Neighborhood Council, SCNC, supports Council File 22-0930, title. Compton Avenue, Nevin Avenue, Metro right of way, official police garage, OPG, vehicle towing and storage services, excess storage lot, lease agreement. Official police garages, OPGs, provide vehicle towing and storage services for 19 service areas located throughout the city of Los Angeles. OPGs provide space for the city, including the Los Angeles Police Department, LAPD, and the Department of Transportation, LADOT, to impound vehicles, to await release, transport, salvage, or disposal. Recently, these facilities have faced challenges relating to the storage of impounded vehicles, with several areas experiencing great service volume relative to capacity. If there is insufficient storage space, abandoned vehicles, such as broken down RVs will be left on our streets and pose a safety hazard. To help alleviate this problem with capacity, the SCNC supports the acquisition of additional excess vehicles, vehicle storage areas across the city. This includes the Metro right-of-way property located at Compton Avenue and Nevin Avenue, which has already been cleared by the Board of Police Commissioners. This motion is also to be submitted as a community impact statement, CIS, the council file 22-0930. So um, there are a lot of abandoned vehicles throughout the city. You may have seen a lot of these are RVs near the Bologna wetlands um, along different stretches, actually in parts of the valley and they're abandoned or burned out or whatnot. Um, they're supposed to be towed, but oftentimes there's no place to tow these vehicles. And there was a board of police commissioners meeting a few months back in which uh, one of the deputy chiefs mentioned that they were having a problem finding adequate facilities to, to store impounded um, RVs and other large vehicles. So uh, the city found a property, it's in a different, just south of downtown, um, which would help provide um, more parking for these kinds of situations. So that's what the motion's about. It's not really a Studio City thing, but in a sense it is because of the, uh, all these vehicles, if there's no place to park them, 
in different parts of the city, then it affects Studio City as well. That's it, thanks. Thank you, Jeff. Going to public comment on the motion that was just read, call in user one. Please unmute yourself. Hey, it's Ruth. Um, I'm pretty sure this is out of our jurisdiction. I don't know if that is something that is allowed or not, but um, I know that the LAPD, um, there was an article done by Elizabeth, um, I think her last name is CHOU. Um, she wrote about how many RVs are towed by LAPD every year. And it's 1,000 annually. And 50% of them are never picked back up by their owners, which means that 500 families, couples, or individuals become homeless, like on, in a tent or on a sidewalk instead of in an RV. And I think that this motion should not be supported. The police garage should not be taking more things from people that already have very little. And um, we should be trying to find areas in Studio City, like parking lots and whatnot, where people can actually work on their RVs and, and fix them and repair them and get back like maybe into housing even from there. That's my perspective on this, thank you. Go to puppet business. Unmute yourself. Go ahead, please. What Brendan forgot to tell you <laughs> is that before they can be moved, all the fluids have to be drained out of these RVs. The brown water has to be drowned. The black water and the gray water tanks must be emptied. As well, the propane tanks must be removed, inspected, and emptied or, or recycled and the gas has to be drawn out before they can be towed. <laughs> Do you know how much fucking money that costs right there? That's the problem. They need a staging area. But Goat Puppet, once again in his brilliance, between his horns, his mind has come up with an idea. <laughs> Take him up the five freeway up to Kern County. <laughs> they have so much room up there, it's such a pretty place. <laughs> and then we can have a contest. The ones that run will hide the RV and we'll play a Where's Waldo game. So that if they find the RV, we give it back to them, wave the fines, and give them a $500 gas gift card. <laughs> that's great. Yeah, so that's my friendly amendment. Imagine, we can make homelessness an actual fun activity in our city while cleaning our streets and making them beautiful, like over at Encino and Sherman Oaks and Tarzana. <laughs> Anyone else from the public have anything to say about the motion at hand? Please raise your hand. Not seeing any hands raised. Public comment is closed. We're going to go on to the board. Does anyone have anything to add or say to this motion, or are we ready to vote? We are ready to vote. All right, this is motion 11C, which would uh, support the acquisition of additional excess vehicle storage capacity. Kim Clements. Yes. Dean Cutler. Dean Cutler, yes. Randall Freed is absent. Ira Gold. Yes. Jeff Hardwick, yes. Julie Houlihan. Yes. Scott Mandel. Yes. Chip Meehan is absent. Brandon Marino. Yes. Richard Niederberg. Yes. Karen Saro. Absent. Adam Summer. Yes. Alexis Steinberg and Abigail Velasco are absent. Motion passes. All right, my last motion for the evening. Sorry for the length. Motion draft LAPD support letter by SCNC president regarding Studio City Neighborhood Council support for Los Angeles Police Department, dear Mayor Garcetti and Los Angeles City Council members. The board of the Studio City Neighborhood Council, SCNC, writes to declare its strong support for the Los Angeles Police Department, LAPD, and to request certain actions from you. The brave officers and diligent staff of the LAPD provide our community with something that is at times taken for granted, our safety and security. We thank you and our council members for restoring 
previous LAPD funding. We also support the $87 million operational increase in funding to the LAPD for the 2022-2023 fiscal year uh, city budget of $11.8 billion. We request that you identify a way forward to achieve full staffing of the LAPD, which is significantly understaffed at this time, especially by national standards. Lack of adequate staffing results in fewer crimes investigated and the inability of the police to respond to criminal activity in a timely manner, which endangers us all. We request that you support the work of the LAPD to enhance your public communications, acknowledging the important job the LAPD does and to build relationships with local communities. We declare our appreciation for LAPD Senior Lead Officer Sean Smith. He is a valuable and dedicated crime fighter whose extensive knowledge and awareness of our community's crime issues have contributed immensely to the safety and well being of Studio City. We need more officers like Sean Smith in Los Angeles. We request that the city attorney support equal and full enforcement of all laws and ordinances and that the city council oppose any politicized special ordinances and or policies that hinder or prevent the ability of the LAPD to enforce the law. Police enforcement duties should be predictable and consistent. There should not be a blanket policy of non-prosecution of misdemeanors and quality of life infractions. Non-prosecution will only encourage further law breaking. We request these actions from the city council because Studio City residents and stakeholders strongly believe that additional police support and resources are essential to help the LAPD and to keep our neighborhood safe. Respectfully, Scott Mandel, President, Studio City Neighborhood Council. Well, uh, the Greater Toluca Lake Neighborhood Council passed a similar letter, and so this is kind of based on that. Um, the police always seem to get um, opprobrium thrown at them, um, lots of complaints about them, and it's, it's not often that they actually get accolades for, for a very difficult job that they do. So uh, Toluca Lake passed it. I thought that we should do the same thing. So, so here it is. Thank you. Thanks for that, Jeff. Goat Puppet Business. Go ahead, please. Goat Puppet, unmute yourself. Yes. What a nice boot looking motion. Nom, 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 nom. Yes. That's what uh, the former Prime Minister of Britain did in those videos of, of the Queen I saw over the weekend. You know, Neville Chamberlain over there licking the boots of the cops over there in Germany. <laughs> You're doing such a good job. We don't want any trouble. <laughs> Well, the reality is, is none of our cops live in Los Angeles. No, they live in pretty places far away, like Stevenson Ranch and Newhall Ranch, where Goat Puppet went to some open houses on Sunday. Yes, you should have seen them when they saw me going down the street. One of them said, hey, what the hell? I know who he is. And then you know where it went from there. <laughs> Yeah, they called the LA County Sheriff's on us. That's right, yes. And of course, you know what happens when they came out and saw my reelect Alex be in the way of a bumper sticker. Oh boy, yes. I believe child services will be out to their homes next week from what I heard, yes. <laughs> Support your sheriff. He's the good cop, but you're cheap as an asshole. <laughs> and play my remarks back today at the Public Safety Committee as Goat Puppet took time out of his busy schedule to talk to Monica Cal Regan. Next time, please conclude your oh, comment. Moo, yes. You could go back, and I mentioned this about the cops, your motion. <laughs> I... uh, thank you, Colin User 1. Brandon's to blame for this. Go ahead, Colin User 1, unmute yourself. Hey, it's Ruth. Okay, so it says that the LAPD is understaffed. I don't know what standards that's based off of, but uh, Los Angeles has several other police departments, including the sheriff, the CHP, 
So um, we have a lot of cops for people. I believe that at one point, downtown Los Angeles had the most cops per person of anywhere in the world, except for Baghdad, which was occupied by the US military. So um, we're not short on cops. Um, as far as accolades, they get almost our whole general fund. That's a lot of billions of dollars. That's a lot of accolades. Um, as far as um, treating every crime equally, no, that is ridiculous. We have an unsolved murder of an unhoused person here in Studio City, a very nice person um, who got stabbed 80 times. That should not be treated equally as somebody pushing a shopping cart or drinking from an open container because it's not equal. A murder, a human life is not the same thing as a misdemeanor or like whatever. And, and not focusing on petty crimes and focusing on real crimes that matter is good. And, and we should be doing that. Um, it's called priority. Um, if the if the LAPD like solves that time, murder, I would be more into giving them accolades. So that's what I think. Thank you, Patty. Go ahead, please. Hi. Uh, thank you, Jeff, for putting this forward. And I'd like to ask that if I could get a copy of this signed letter for Thursday night's CPAB meeting to read out loud. The um, the the police are really could use this boost of community confidence as uh, Ruth is absolutely wrong about that. We are very short of police in our area, especially. So um, people, the police are retiring and we are not able to fill the spots with the academy because people don't wanna be a cop anymore. <laughs> so um, I think it would be very helpful to get that as soon as I can and read it at the meeting. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else from the public have a comment on that? Raise your hand. Not seeing any more hands. Public comment is closed. On to the board. Jeff? You're muted. Jeff, you're, uh, you're muted. Sorry about that. Um, the LAPD is understaffed. If you look at the New York City Police Department, they have 36,000 officers. We're supposed to be staffed at around 10,000, but we're not right now. Lots of retirements. Um, they can't graduate enough people from the academy because they don't have enough trained officers to, to deal with the, the new recruits after they graduate from the academy. So they should be graduating 60 officers. Right now they're graduating 30. Um, at the National Night Out, I spoke to many of our local police officers and there's a terrible shortage of, of officers right now. They're overworked. There's lots of overtime. There's only one squad car that's designated for our Studio City area, and that's insufficient. And, you know, crime is going up. So we definitely need to support our officers, and they are understaffed. They're underappreciated. And I, I just hope this letter will at least uh, alleviate part of that problem. Thank you. Thank you. I see a hand up from the public, Patrice. Unmute yourself. Go ahead, please. Hi, everybody. I, to make it short, totally support the police on this issue. Thank you, guys. Okay. Any other board comment before we... Kim, go ahead. This is really just about procedure. I, The motion is written in a way that we're used to seeing Studio City Neighborhood Council support such and such. I, I, maybe that's uh, because it's in the first line of the letter, but I'm just wondering if if this was written correctly that, because I was looking saying, where where exactly is the motion we're used to seeing that we're voting on? It, do, it doesn't say the Neighborhood Council supports the letter written as below to be, you know, uh, submitted blah 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 it, it's a little strange i truly procedural i love this um it's all great but i was just wondering it's yeah that, that's if i may that's because it's a president's letter it's not like a cis where you say the board of the neighbors studio city neighborhood council supports cis blah 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 it, it says in the 
the raise section, Studio City Neighborhood Council's support for LAPD. So, and it's, it's a basically a president's letter just saying, this is what we think, this is our letter of support, and that's okay. it. So it's just a letter of support. It's not a CIS or, or a request okay. for action. Thank you. Scott, yeah, I think we have to go back to public comment since we went from, we opened it up from board back to public. Uh, I think it was might have been a hand that I missed. We didn't uh, give anyone a second bite at the apple. I, okay. I think okay. Good. Uh, each person only had one turn. So not seeing any more hands from the board. I think we can vote on this now. All right, motion 11D, the letter of support for the LAPD. Kim Clements. Yes, definitely. Thank you. Dean Cutler. Dean Cutler, yes. Randall Freed, absent. Ira Gold. Yes. Jeff Harwick, yes. Julie Houlihan. Yes. Scott Mandel. Yes. Chip Meehan is absent. Brandon Marino. Yes. Richard Niederberg. Yes. Karen Serrell is absent. Adam Summer. Yes. Alexis Steinberg and Abigail Velasco are absent. Motion passes. Thank you. Thank you, Jeff. On to the last item 12, good of the order. Brief comments from board members on items not on the agenda. Do any board members have been yes. to say about something that was not on the agenda that they'd like to discuss briefly? Ira, go ahead, please. Got another um, graffiti uh, uh, complaint handled, which is nice. Um, although it wasn't really handled that well. So um, got, uh, uh, got the owner's information and gonna be sending, got the report. It's, it's, um, it's, it's, the, it's the establishment on Ventura that had uh, uh, a truck in the back that was uh, caught on fire mysteriously. So I got the um, incident report and I'm going to be uh, contacting the owner of that property to see if they can, uh, if they'd be willing to do anything about uh, maybe cleaning it up, cleaning up the front so it doesn't look like a disaster zone. Wanted to share. Thank you, Ira. Any other board members, anything to say about anything that is not on the agenda that you want to get off your chest or off your mind? Speak now, going once, going twice, and just for abundance of caution, we're gonna to go to public comment on this last item, and then we'll adjourn. Go puppet business. Go ahead. Yeah, so go back and watch the debate. You have a tough choice. You will reelect sheriff be in the way of a, that the LA County Board is afraid of, and we'll try to indict more of them. Or do you go for this puppet named Luna? <laughs> oh no, Alex, that's right. Don't be fooled. <laughs> and then our mayor's race. What an interesting conundrum. Now we know Brandon wants to vote for Bass, <laughs> but I think that right after the election, if she wins. <laughs> I think there's going to be a knock, knock. Who's there? FBI. Who, oh, FBI who? FBI wanted to know, where'd you get that free diploma? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Or do you vote for Caruso? A complete pathetic asshole. <laughs> yes, I'm going to make up my mind soon. And when Scott gives me video privileges, I'll announce my decision. <laughs> It's in my hands. It's very close. Whatever I decide will be the next mayor. Entertainment value for Bass, indicted right after the election, or Car Caruso, the complete asshole liar. So you need to decide, but I'll decide, and I'll let you know. That's the good of the order. And then I'm going to make a motion from the floor to adjourn this meeting two hours early. <laughs> That's time. <laughs> Thank you, everybody. Uh, unless I see or hear any objections, I'm going to adjourn this meeting. 
at 9.03 p.m. I want to thank the board for attending. We got done in, in two hours. I think that's pretty good. Thank you to all the members of the public who joined in and participated. And good night, everybody. Thank you all. Good night. Bye. See you Saturday. Right.